Hello and welcome once again to some more nerdy rodent geekery. Today I am looking at text to image generation, but this time with OpenAI's guided diffusion, as well as OpenAI Clip as well. We have these two rather cool notebooks from Catherine Croson we've got here. One with a, a 256 by 256 model and also one with a 512 by 512 model. This sort of incorporates both models into one place. So you can just set output size to either 256 or 512 and it will give you some sizes like that. And uh, let's, let's have a look at some of these example images. So here we have a woman standing in a park. This is what this will create for you. Text to image. And there you go. You have lots of, well, rather different looking women standing in a park. Here's one that's like a sort of miniature gnome with a tiny little bag that looks like about, you know, the same size of that plant. So maybe a centimetre high. There are a sort of normal sized woman and all sorts of other variants. There's another tiny one there next to a tuft of grass back to you. And, and there's sort of perspective things going on as well. You've got trees in the background and one in the foreground and oh. Oh, all sorts of stuff. So you've got an alien landscape here as well. Lots of rather funky looking textures. Those look rather weird, don't they? Hmm. And uh, talking of weird, here is a painting of a man. Now, as you can see, these are all entirely very, very different. All from that one prompt, a painting of a man. If you've been using VQ GAN plus Clip, you're probably used to typing things in like, oh, a painting of a man in the style of Manet or, or whatever, you know, but um, yes, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's different with this one. You just, you just have to type something rather small and limited will do, uh, and uh, it will produce um, some rather amazing results for you. So yes, very, very much liked. Uh, those are, of course, ever so slightly enhanced with uh, real ESR GAN just to get some realistic looking eyes and noses and mouths and things in there. Mm. Now, of course, if you've seen my previous video on real ESR GAN, GFP GAN, you will know all about that. Mm -hmm. As always, I'm using Ubuntu 2004 Anaconda and this RTX 3090. Now, if you want to use the 256 model, you're probably going to need about 10 gig of VRAM. Um, you can use a CPU, but it's incredibly slow even on the GPU, so good luck with that. But by all means, if you are happy waiting one, two, three, four hours for an image, then yes, go ahead and use a CPU. Um, 512 defaults, you'll need at least 18 gig of VRAM, so quite chunky there. Now you can play around with a few options and bring that down. So you may be able to get it working on a 1070 and eight gig. Mm, yeah, so yeah, give it a try, maybe, maybe. Now, uh, Anaconda setup as always for a Python virtual environment, Conda create minus minus name CGD. And uh, I'm actually using my old VQGAN environment down there because, well, yeah, it's, it's not much different. It's still open AI clip. Uh, but just with a uh, guided diffusion model as well. So don't forget to uh, download the repo and actually change directory into there. So git clone if you want, or download the zip and unzip it, and uh, CD clip guided diffusion. And there's a little setup file there, so you can just run the setup file and that'll do all the setup things for you. I, of course, have already got everything installed, so it's it's quite quick and easy. There, does all the things. Or if you want to type these in manually, then there they are. Uh, in installing PyTorch and OpenAI Clip and all these other things and downloading the models for you if you want. So yes, your choice. One one little setup file, make it executable, run it, or, or do all those. Entirely up to you. And then you are ready to start running things. So there, you could just do, uh, you know, as in VQGAN Clip, minus P, painting of an apple. So let, let's do something here. Let's, uh, let's go with, uh, I don't know what this is, but it's weird. Let's... Let's draw one of those. Okay. Now, uh, this will take a little while, as I've mentioned, even with a GPU. So uh, I'm going to modify time and, and come back when it's done. And there we go. So we should have a painting of something weird. There we go. That is definitely weird. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to turn that off now because it's cursed. Right, anyway, so we've got multiple prompts as well. So as before, you can put a little bar in there. You can also put the weights after a colon as well. So there is a painting of an apple that is ever so slightly surreal and a little bit weird. 
there you go there you go so loads and loads of other options to play with as well as always you can use an image prompt as well if you, if you want and an initial image you can also uh, when you're doing the initial image you will need to set uh, skip time steps and uh, init scale as well uh, so good values there between 200 and 500 and maybe a thousand for that uh, clip model if you want to uh, use a different clip model you know you've got the vip b32 or 16 whatever uh, time steps there you can have uh, an integer or any one of these so uh, yep that's fine but it must go into the uh, diffusion steps so for example if you're using uh, ddm 150 uh, the number of uh, time steps by default is a thousand so that will go no 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 i can't do it so if you change the diffusion steps to something like 900 you know as long as it's divisible then yeah You'll, you'll be fine. Uh, save every, same as always. Basically, how often do you want to save it? Um, batch size, number of batches I haven't really played with, to be honest. But uh, number of cuts, the uh, cut batches and the cut power is definitely something that you will want to play with because this is what impacts the amount of VRAM that's used and sort of like the quality of the image as well. Uh, as a very rough rule of thumb, the more cuts, the better the quality of the image, but that's kind of variable um, you can also do the cuts in batches so on a 3090 for example uh, the maximum number of cuts I could do with the 256 model uh, was 190 but if you want to cut that into lots and lots of batches then that's fine so for example you could do uh, 64 cuts and four batches so yeah it's, it's another way of doing it uh, and the cut power you will also want to change probably to 0.5 uh, if you're using the 512 model. It uses 256 by default and a cut power of 1, which is great. But yes, certainly have a play with the cut power if you're using the 512 model. Uh, clip guidance scale and TV scale and range scale, as I've mentioned down here, sort of uh, control a little bit of the image guidance. So uh, as a 1000 by default on that, um, but I've had good results from 500 as well. Uh, TV scale controls the smoothness. Again, I get fairly good results with about five on that, uh, and the default range scale is absolutely fine. So yeah, that's 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 good. Uh, so there are a few examples of using the uh, the extended options. There's a fractal, an impressionist painting of a cat, which is more like a dog. Uh, that's that's a cat apparently. Yeah, not, not too zoomy on that one, but never mind. Yeah, so if you want to have another a look at some other repos as well, there is also another clip guided diffusion repo, different options, all that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, much much the same thing, still based on the uh, Catherine Croson notebooks. But there you go, clip guided diffusion, couple of notebooks for you to play with from Craft Catherine Croson there, and uh, also this repo if you want to uh, play with it locally. So there you go, get creating images, and uh, yeah, that's that's it. That's it, rodent out.